The normalized impedance on the Smith chart is at the center. That is where the imaginary part is 0 and the real part is 1. So then we end up with Z in is equal to 1. So that's where we want to be. If we can find a way to move this impedance dot, which right now is right here, so we, if we can find a way to move that to the center of the Smith chart, we'll have a matched condition. But as we move along the transmission line away from the load towards the generator, where does the normalized load impedance move? Well, as we're moving towards the generator, we're spinning around the middle of the Smith chart and we never actually get there. We just keep spinning around and around the further we go down the transmission line. So we would never get there. All right, so let's figure out if we or if and how we might use a circuit element in parallel to the load to help us match the load to the transmission line. Before answering this question, let's remember that for circuit elements in parallel, it's easier to work with admittances, y, instead of impedances, z, which is what we've been doing so far. Because admittances add when circuit elements are in parallel. Now fortunately, we can transform our Smith chart into a chart of admittances. Here's the Smith chart we've been using so far, as the Smith chart with impedance coordinates. Z is R plus J X. And here, to convert a Smith chart for impedances to a Smith chart for admittances, we reflect the impedances through the origin, so through this dot. When we do that, then we have the corresponding admittance. So little y is equal to j, g, we're going to have g is going to be the real part of the admittance, and b, the, for the arcs, is going to be the imaginary part. So the real admittance values still correspond to circles, and the imaginary admittance values still correspond to arcs. And the lower half, uh, the imaginary values on the lower half are still negative, you can see that here, and the top half are positive values. Now the values in the bottom half of the Smith chart uh, I have it backwards. So the top half of the Smith chart are going to be capacitive now. And that's because the impedance for a capacitor, I'll write it over here, Z is minus J over omega C. But Y, the admittance, is 1 over Z. And once we convert that, we'd have to take minus omega C over J we could multiply by j over j. We have j times j here, we'll get another minus sign, the minus signs will cancel, and we just get j omega c, which is a positive value. So that's why the top half of the Smith chart now represents capacitive values. Same thing for the inductive values. They switched from being on the top half of the Smith chart for impedances to the bottom half of the S Smith chart. So here we had red on the bottom for capacitive, and here we have red on the top, so they switched sides. Since it's easier to use admittances when working with circuit elements in parallel, let's now convert the impedance of our antenna to the corresponding admittance. Now to do this, we've seen, we've talked about how we're going to reflect through the origin. So to do this, you can measure in centimeters or inches the distance from the origin of the Smith chart to the impedance dot measure this distance and then you can drawing a straight line through you can measure the same distance on the opposite side of the origin in other words we're flipping the impedance through the origin of the Smith chart to obtain the admittance little y l that's normalized so here we got 0 0.4 plus j 0 0.8 and that's because y l goes through about the 0.4 circle and the positive 0.8 arc. Now we want to use the Smith chart to match the antenna load to the transmission line by adding a circuit element. 
or stub in parallel to the transmission line. The goal is to have the transmission line with the circuit element or the stub in parallel match the characteristic admittance of the transmission line. So in other words, what we're after now is that Y in is equal to Y not. Where if we have our, here is YL, and here we might have our circuit element. So right here, as we're looking to see both the circuit element and this is the anode, this is Y in, and over here we have Y, Y not. Where would the Y in dot be on the Smith chart? 